Welcome to this video where I wanted to go over how we find the rotation of a star and we can use these things called star spots we can use those to actually get the rotation of a star but first it's probably worth noting that there are a few different methods we can use to actually determine the rotation of a star so here is a plot of the spectral type of a star along the bottom and this actually relates to its temperature really so how hot it is they have a spectral type given how, what their spectrum actually looks like and then the y-axis is their rotation velocity and you can see that there's some dependence on the temperature and that and the point is we have a rotation of the star and we need a way to actually get that now the one i want to go over in this video relates to star spots but there are other ones some of them are a lot more complex to actually use and determine this one um, we can relate to the sun quite well because we can give an example of that so firstly I'm going to introduce sunspots, which are kind of the same as star spots, although we can't really see star spots. But with sunspots, these are darker regions on the surface of the sun. So if you've got a solar telescope and you're able to actually look at the sun, you'll see darker regions there. Now we say that they are cooler, and they are, but they're not cold. They're just cooler than the surrounding area, which is why they look dark. Um, so you'll see these kind of sunspots, these darker regions on the kind of surface of the sun really and they are generally associated with magnetically active regions so this is in a different wavelength and this will be looking more on the outer layers of the sun and as you kind of come up further out into more of the atmosphere sort of thing you'll see these sorts of structures and these will be located in the same area as the sunspots so the sunspots will actually be located kind of at the bottom of these structures and you can see you've got these really tight twisted magnetic field lines and these are fairly characteristic with the same locations as sunspots so generally associated with magnetically active regions and the sun generally rotates about once every 27 days and i say that because it doesn't all rotate at 27 days it's approximately 27 days and we can obviously look at that quite easily and measure it and we can determine how long it takes to go around it's quite straightforward for the sun because we can actually see it properly but it's also worth noting with the sun that it has a differential rotation rate so the equator will rotate faster than the poles and it's not a solid object so it doesn't rotate as a solid object all at the same rate you have this differential rotation and it just means that the equator is going faster than the poles and it is just a ball of plasma basically which is why because it's not that solid object um, so what we can do is we can also use the sunspots on the surface to measure the rotation so this is something you can actually do at home if you've got a telescope with a solar filter and you can see the sun and the sunspots you can actually determine the rotation rate of the sun by monitoring how fast they move across the surface and because it has a differential rotation rate what you can do is you can measure it at different latitudes. So if you get closer to the poles, you should note that the rotation rate will be different. And it should be something you can actually measure at home as well as just looking at these nice images as well. So when we go to stars, we can't generally resolve them. So we can't see the actual surface detail. They're more a point source of light. And there's a nice picture of a globular cluster there. And you can get the colors and stuff, but it's very, very difficult to actually see surface data. Now, there are the odd star that are large enough, well situated in the sky, that maybe we've started to get a little bit of surface detail, but it's not very high resolution. So it might be slightly darker regions, brighter regions, but it's not the same detail we'd get to see those sunspots on our sun. But what we can do is on the right there, in the blue box, is we've got a light curve and that is the brightness of a star over time so you can see how bright the star is as time goes by and you'll find that most stars do have some variation in their brightness so even the sun will change in brightness over time so if we look at the light curve of some stars we will get a plot that looks a little bit like this so you've got some periodic change in the brightness of the star so it will get brighter and it will get dimmer and there will be some period associated with that where it kind of repeats the same pattern 
Now, if the star has got star spots on it, we can't actually really see them, but if they are facing towards us, they're darker, they're cooler, which would make the star dimmer. So if they're facing towards us, the star actually appears slightly dimmer than it would do normally. And when the star spot is directly facing towards us is when the star appears at its dimmest, compared to when it's kind of more towards the outer parts or the edge of the star. Now the reason for that is that the star is not evenly illuminated. It's actually brighter in the center than it is towards the edge or towards the limb. So when you've got a star spot in the central part of the star, it's going to make the star appear dimmer than if it's towards the outer parts, because the outer parts are already dimmer anyway, so it's actually reducing the light given off by the star less. So this is why you get that kind of nice curve as opposed to just being more of a straight line. Now, when the star spots have gone behind the star, and we can no longer see them from our point of view, then the star will appear at its brightest because there's no darker regions on the star facing us, so it's going to appear at its brightest at that location there. Now what we can do then is we've measured the brightness of that star over time, and if we've got a plot like this, we can then measure the rotation period of the star by going from you know peak to peak, something like that, so from the brightest part to the next brightest part, and that should give us the period of the star if it relates to those star spots on the surface. Now here's an actual example of one here. So this is um, some star spot modulation on a red dwarf star, so a fairly low mass cool star. And the blue line is the actual star spots. And you can see you've got a bit of a regular pattern now, which is going to relate to your rotation period of the star. It's not exactly the same each time. And something I didn't mention earlier on is that the sunspots themselves do change and evolve. So they will get kind of large and they'll be in groups, they'll move around in their groups themselves. So it changes slightly each time. So it's not going to be perfectly the same, but you'll get a fairly common period. And the other thing with these red dwarf stars, as you'll probably notice, you've got these quite strong vertical lines which are related to flares. This is where you've got a sudden outburst and it's made the star a lot brighter for a very short period of time. And the red dwarf stars typically have quite significant ones in comparison to their size. But the blue one, the blue line, is the one we're interested in here. And just note this is actually a very fast rotating star because your x-axis is in days. So you can see that actually the rotation period is quite fast compared to the sun, which was just less than a month. Now, it also relates to the magnetic activity cycles. So the sun becomes more magnetically active and then less magnetically active, which means that you have more and then less sunspots on the surface. So what that does is it kind of makes it, it's not always the same to use for rotation rates really. So you won't even have any sunspots maybe some days. So how do you then measure the rotation? This is going to be the same for other stars as well. We would expect them to have these cycles in magnetic activity, which may make this method more problematic to use, actually. Uh, but we know the sun has a fairly obvious cycle in these magnetic activities. So again, we expect a similar sort of thing for other stars, making it a little bit harder. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.